Amen. How we doing, everybody? Let's all stand. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys excited to be here today? Amen. Come on. Woo. We're going to dunk some people today. Amen. Come on. Let's all pray. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place. God, we say thank you for all that you are. God, you alone are worthy, Jesus, of our praise, God, of our lives, God. And so we just ask, God, it's not by chance that any of us are here today, but it's by your divine purpose. And so we just say, come. God, we welcome you in this place. We open up our hearts to what you want to do today, Jesus. And we celebrate, God, with all creation, God, the reality that you alone are sovereign, God, that you alone are good, that you alone are worthy, God. So we just say we love you, we praise you, we thank you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Come on, let's worship.
How many know Jesus is our foundation we stand on? Amen? Come on, let's sing this out. Sing it over loud. 
news, amen? How many know he's faithful, amen? Come on. To your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever. Drives my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God, heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus. Just our voices, just raise our hands, just a posture of saying, God, I want all that you have. Just sing that over your life, sing. To your cross and my freedom, your love, my healing, oh praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, oh praise. Jesus, glory to God forever. Amen. Do you believe that over your lives? Yes, Lord. How many know his promises are yes and amen? Amen? Come on.
for you. Amen? How many of you guys, sometimes we talk about the middle here at the bridge a lot of the time. Carmel's going to talk about it on Saturday today. And there's times in your life when what God says doesn't necessarily line up with what you see in your life. You believe he's going to get you to the other side. You believe you're going to make it through. But a lot of times in the middle, it's hard. Amen? And so I want to sing this. I want to have Jill sing this song called Praise Before My Breakthrough. And there's seasons in life, I just want to encourage you, where you're going to have to worship when it doesn't feel good. Amen? When you're going to have to trust when you don't see or don't understand. Where you're going to have to stand in faith, not because it makes you feel better or warm and fuzzy, but because you're saying, God, I just need you to come through. I need you to pull me through, God. I'm saying I trust in you no matter what. Um, those of you guys that know, we have Isabel Camacho. They're leaving, I believe, for Mexico just in a couple days, or today, actually, yeah, right today. Um, they're leaving to get treatment. She was diagnosed, man, a week and a half ago with stage four stomach cancer. Um, and she's just standing in faith, just saying, God, I believe that you're able. I believe that you can heal. God, that Satan's not going to steal my worship. God, I'm going to continue worshiping you. God, no matter what, it's standing in faith. And so, again, 
the last two services, we haven't done this, but I feel like for us in here today, I feel like this is the Lord. And so for any of you in here that needs breakthrough in your life, needs an impossible situation, how many of you guys just need a touch of the Savior today, honestly? Anybody? Come on, amen, come on. Let's just raise our hands. We're gonna pray. God, we just pray right now, God, in this moment, Jesus, we acknowledge that these aren't just songs that we're singing. God, we acknowledge, God, that our words carry weight, God. And so as we praise, God, as we worship God in the midnight hour of our lives, God, you know every detail of everyone's life here. Jesus, we say we believe that you're faithful, God. We believe that you alone are able, God. So we just ask, God, I speak breakthrough and freedom in this place right now, Jesus. God, that as people worship you, God, that they praise before their breakthrough, God, that they praise, God, not because it feels good. We don't sing and worship today because it feels good. We worship because we get to, God, because we get to worship you, God, because we get to respond to you, God, for who you are and what you've done. And so we just ask, Holy Spirit, in this moment, God, do miracles in our lives, Jesus. God, whether it's breakthrough in finances, God, breakthrough in marriages, God, breakthrough in relationships, God, breakthrough in health right now, Jesus. God, we acknowledge, God, that your name is above every name. God, so we just say we love you today. We just praise you for all that you are. Amen? Let's worship. Come on.
now of the words, we just sing this out. Sing, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. See, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. God, we do. We just thank you today, Jesus, for all that you are, God. We bless you, God. We ask, God, continue just to open up our hearts, God, to your word today, Jesus. It's not by chance that we're here, but it's by your divine purpose. And so, God, may we encounter you today in such a way that we leave this place different than when we came in. We just say thank you, God. We bless you for all that you are. And all those people said, amen. Come on. Welcome to the bridge, you guys. Give somebody a hug next to you. Amen. Good morning, church. I see you've had your coffee. Real quick before I get started, um, we are having baptisms today. So exciting. If you're getting baptized today and you haven't grabbed your shirt yet, make sure you go to the info table right now to get it on because we want to get you ready. You can follow Kathy right there. Awesome. My name is Abby and I have the privilege of bringing the offering exhortation this morning. So we're going to turn in our Bibles to the book of Esther. To the book of Esther. And what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about the part where this evil man, Haman, deceived the king into creating this big decree to kill all the Jews. And then Esther, who was the queen, married to the king, her uncle hears about this, and so he goes to her and says, hey, girl, you got to do something about it right now or we're in trouble. So this is what Esther says, starting in verse 11. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself had not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So basically she's saying, if I go in there, he's probably going to kill me. So I can't go talk to the king right now. So they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to this kingdom for such a time as this. That was a pretty strong word, huh? Verse 15, Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go and gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for these three days, night or day. My maids and I will go fast likewise, and so I will go to the king which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. You know, amazingly enough about this story of Esther, I really feel this is the hour and the season that God has called his church to be in Esther, right? There has been an assignment of the enemy to try and seek and destroy the church, to try and seek and destroy life, even with this infocide bill that's coming up in our own state, very gnarly assignment of the enemy to try and kill. And literally, we are in the position of Esther to take a stand. And that's what God's calling to us in this hour. What are we going to do, church? Are we going to tuck and run and hide and pretend nothing's happening? Or are we going to take a stand in this hour and say, enough is enough? There... There are hours and seasons when we're supposed to just pray. 
There are hours and seasons, ladies, when we need to be quiet. I'm a lady, I can say it. Okay, but there are hours and seasons when we need to speak up and stand up. And this is where we're at. When literally life is in the balance here. And it's so key and it's so important for us today. We can't look with our natural eyes, church. We need to look through our spiritual eyes. We need to hear with spiritual ears what's happening in our world today. Because if we look with our natural eyes, we're going to miss it. We're going to be intimidated by this booming Goliath in our media telling us it's hopeless. Everybody's against you. You're never going to make it. There's no God in America. Okay? That's what they're trying to say. But we need to not listen to that, but listen to him. Because he is way greater than that giant. Right? That giant is nothing to him. So we need to stand as God's representative, as that Esther, to take a stand in this hour. You know, you may say to me, Abby, I'm not a queen. Especially you guys are like, I'm not a queen. Okay? You know what? It doesn't matter because you have a circle of influence that God has called you to in your family, in your workplace, in the school your kids are involved in, right? And in, in everywhere you go, God wants to use you as his ambassador to make a stand in this hour because we cannot shrink back. Because you know what? The enemy, he's not getting easier and easier on us, right? He's going harder and harder and harder at us. So we need to be encouraged. We need to strengthen ourselves in the Lord and say, no, 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 Goliath. You are not going to say that about my God. You are not going to say that about his church in America. You're not going to say that about our state of California. Because God is poised and ready to move. But we have to stand. We can't be intimidated in this hour. We need to be connected to the source. Because it is key. Like with Esther, if you're not going to stand, don't think you're going to get hidden and everything's going to be okay. Right? We have to stand. Amen. And you know what I love about Esther's story too? She didn't go to the king and go, you are an idiot. Don't you know I'm a Jew? And now you're telling everybody to kill the Jews? Right? She didn't do that. She went after Haman. Right? She went to the spirit behind of what was going on. Because going to the king would would be just a distraction. Right? What do we want to do? We want to wrestle against flesh and blood. We want to work with the people that are deceived and go, well, let me show you the light versus going after the spirit behind this stuff and confronting it and saying, no, that is enough. Amen. So I encourage us, church, in this hour, do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. And this is a time to speak and to stand. Amen. Lord God, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that even in our finances, you're calling us to take a stand. This is not a time to get in a poverty mentality of like, oh, well, we don't have enough. We can't be generous. We can't help people because we don't have that. But Lord, this is the time to be generous and basically declare with our finances, no, we live in the kingdom of God. And the world is not our source. And as we are generous in our families and in our church and in our circumstances, we're going to see God intervene in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's invite our Pastor Carmelo up. Let's extend our hands. Lord God, we thank you for our Pastor Carmelo. We thank you, Father God, that for the fire that is inside of him. And Lord, we thank you that as he speaks the word, Lord God, that the word is going to divide between soul and spirit. Lord God, we thank you that we have ears to hear what the spirit is saying. And that, Lord, today we are going to be forever transformed as we get revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good. Welcome, you guys. If you guys don't know me personally, my name is Carmelo Hernandez, and I have the amazing privilege to be the youth pastor here, but I'm so excited for what we're being able to do today. And let me just tell you, every single one of you guys, before we even get started, it's not by chance that any one of you guys are here today. You guys think it's like it's by chance. It's not. It's by God's divine plan and purpose that you guys are here today. Why? Because he has something for you today. It's are you ready to receive what he has for you today? And I say every time I come up here and preach, get in your guys' word so the word could get in you. If, it's a choice. If you don't get in the word, the word's not going to get in you. So get in the word so the word gets in you. Because I'm going to tell you guys, all what we're living at, what Abby was talking about, if you guys don't know what the truth says, you'll believe like what 
all this fake news that's going on out there and all this worry and all this doubt and all this stuff, that's what I'm going to preach about. We're not here to proclaim the bad news. We're here to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why we gather. I'm going to tell you right now, again, perfect love casts out all fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Peace in the midst of chaos, in the midst of storms that you guys, that we're all dealing with right now. But do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you know about Jesus or do you know him? I see all the time, going to church does nothing, my brothers and my sisters. But becoming the church, that changes people's lives. I don't go to church. I am the church. And Jesus said he'll build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Come on, somebody. That was just, I don't know. I'm ready. I had two little warm-ups and the third one. I'm going to raise some people from the dead today. That's what we're doing today. Death's been defeated. Why? Because he is risen. All right, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. This is Jesus saying, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, Father God, I just thank you, Father God. This is not my word, Father God. This is your word, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. May you soften hearts, Father God, right now to receive your word, Father God. I know, Father God, that your word will not return void, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. It's not by accident, Father God, that anyone is here today, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. May they have a revelation, Father God, of who you are, Father God, and what you've done, that you defeated the cross, you defeated the grave, Father God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. May every single one of us have an encounter with you, Jesus, because the same way that we walked in here, we're not going to walk out the same, all because we had an encounter with you, Jesus. So we just love and we praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 So I'm going to tell you guys what the Lord gave me this passage, and it was literally last Saturday, and the Lord woke me up four in the morning, and he just put this in my spirit. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Literally, it was Saturday. He's like, it's Saturday. We all know about Easter Sunday. We know what happened on Friday. And we know what happened on Sunday. Friday was a crucifixion. Sunday he rose from the grave. But it's Saturday. It's Saturday. So many people in here right now are living in that Saturday moment. Maybe in your guys' family right now. You might have been like Pastor Justin was talking about. We're in the middle right now. We are literally in the middle of that situation. You may have a diagnosis against you or, your, or personally you right now. But let me just tell you right now, it's Saturday. It's Saturday, but Sunday's coming. You and your guys' marriage, you and your guys' marriage is probably falling, it may be falling apart, or the enemy's coming against your family. Why? Because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life, and life more abundantly. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Maybe you have a son or a daughter, or a husband or a wife who file away from the Lord, or maybe in addiction, or whatever the case. Let me encourage you. It's Saturday. Maybe in your guys' finances right now. You don't know where your next meal is going to come from. You don't know where your next employment is going to come from. You don't know where any of that's going to come from. Let me just tell you, it's Saturday. Literally us, me and my wife, like my, my father-in-law right now is in Bend, Oregon right now, fighting for his life right now. Fighting for his life, and we keep on getting reports. We're praying, we're standing, and we're believing. Just like what Jesus said, like, my will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I'm believing that I know that there's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. I'm believing here on earth as it is. Yes, I know he's going to be healed when he's in heaven, but I'm saying and I'm declaring by the mighty name of Jesus that he will be healed here on heaven. Do you have that faith? Do you have that faith? It's a sad statistic that I hear like what people have been talking about, Pastor Justin mentioned it and Pastor Fred mentioned it, and it broke my heart on why he said, why will COVID happen? That 75 to 80 percent of people fell away from the church. And I'm telling you, 
what he's put on my heart, like I'm telling you, I'm not here to condemn any of you. I'm not. Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, every single one of you guys, this guy that's up here preaching right now, my biggest fear, when I was a gang member, I was an alcoholic, I was a drug addict, born and raised here in Santa Maria, doing all that stuff. But you know what my biggest fear was? Was dying. I had a fear of death. Because guess what? I knew where I was going. I, didn't, I knew about God, but I didn't have a personal relationship with them. I knew I was going straight to hell. And I'm going to tell you guys, I say all that to say, since I was a young kid, I thought the world was going to end. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to die. All that stuff. Honestly, this is me. I had, a, I had a thing of fear of death because where I was going. And when this COVID happened, and now I'm a believer, and now I had revelation. It's all about revelation. Have you had revelation of Jesus Christ when the heat is turned up? Do you know about him or do you know him? Going to church does nothing. What do you believe? When the heat gets turned up, and I was like, what do you mean we're shutting down church? This was me. What do you mean we're shutting down church? What are you talking about? We're called to preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. And the Lord stopped me. He said, son, remember where you used to live? Remember where, I, where that fear that used to cripple me? And I'm like, yes, Lord. He's like, go and, go and help my people. Go and help my people. That's why I'm not here to condemn anybody. Or fear is a real thing. Fear, is, fear will bring you to your knees. But, perf- but Jesus did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, a love, and a sound mind. That's the power. Do you have that power? Have you had that revelation? That's what it's all about. Like, just to know, like, so any time in your, let me just tell you guys, in your guys' life right now, any bad situation comes in your life, just know it's Saturday. It's Saturday. In your finances, it's Saturday. In your marriages, it's Saturday. Whatever situation that you are dealing with, just know we all have all these situations. Real things that we're dealing with right now. It's Saturday. But, come on somebody. There's always a but. But Sunday's coming. Come on somebody. Sunday's coming. That's why 2 Corinthians 5, 7 said we walk by faith and not by sight. You know what the opposite of fear is? It's not unbelief. It's sight. We want to see it before we believe it. That's the opposite of the word of God says. Walk by faith and not by sight. Let me tell you what it says in John 16, 33. It's a promise. You guys probably don't have this on your guys' refrigerator. John 16, 33 says, in this world, in this world, you will have trouble. You will. But in me, you will have peace. In, in Jesus, you're going to have peace. And I say this all the time. Peace is not a place, my brothers and my sisters. It's a person. And his name is Jesus. So good. I hear a lot of people like, oh, let me go there in my happy place. It's cool. Like, get away and stuff like that. I know so. I'm getting out of California. How many of you guys are going to be like, oh, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want (laughs) to. Right? A lot of people want to say like, oh, I'm getting out of California. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm leaving. Like, I'm like, brother, like I say, it's like, my brother, my sister, you know, like, you're going to be there, right? (laughs) Like, wherever you, you're, that's not the problem, Right? It's inside your heart. It's knowing that you have him. Peace is not a place. It's a person. It's not a feeling. Happiness is a feeling. We have the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. (sighs) Friday was the crucifixion, the ultimate sacrifice. But I'm telling you, Sunday came. And what did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished. It's finished. That's what he said. It's finished. It's done. He died for us. And all he's asking us is to live for him. Have you had revelation? Have you had revelation? So it's all about do you believe? That's what this is all about. Do you believe? You could quote scripture all you want. We could come in here and sing songs and raise a hallelujah when there's no storm. Hallelujah, in the middle of the storm. Let me, you know how many phone calls we get? 
Pastor Carmelo, all hell's breaking loose. Where's your hallelujah? I'm not, you know what I'm talking about? But that's what it said. What's, what's ever inside of you will come out. If you haven't had revelation of Jesus, finished work of the cross, and you know about him, but you don't know him, you're going to be walking in fear. You're going to be walking in doubt. You're going to be walking in shame. I'm not here to condemn anybody. And let me tell every single one of you guys in here, my job as a pastor here, I'm not, we're not here to entertain you guys. My job is to equip you guys for the workings of, to know, equip you guys. So when Satan comes at you guys like a flood, the devil come only has one agenda, kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life and life more abundantly. That's why today I'm going to take you guys a scripture of the signification of baptism. We're literally going to raise the dead today. That's what, if you really know what baptism is always about, well, only about, that's what it's about. Do you know what it's about? Again, if you guys are coming in this water and you're just doing it because maybe your mom said or your friend said or someone told you that, you know what it is? It's religion. Do you know the meaning of baptism? That's why we don't sprinkle, that's why we don't baptize young little babies. Young kids, we don't sprinkle them. That's not biblical. I'm going to take you guys to Scripture, and I'm going to show you guys that. <clears throat> and it's all about do you believe. And let me tell you guys, even for me, the reason why I'm up here preaching the way I'm preaching is because I've been through so many fires. I, my faith was tested. So I'm, I'm talking years and years. And some people do tell me this, like, oh, Carmelo, I'm, I want to kind of be like you in that fire, and I want to be. My brother, if you want to be like me, you got to go through 37 years of pretty much hell that I went through. This costs something. This costs something. This ain't free. You don't think the gates of hell try to come against me? Right? But I've had revelation. I pray that every single one of you guys have revelation. When the fire gets hot. Do you have revelation? That's what it's all about when, you're, when your son is going wayward or there's a sickness, cancer comes knocking at your door or COVID knocks on your door. Death knocks on your door. Have you had revelation? Do you believe? That's what it's all about. We could quote, I know so many people who quote scripture in and out, way more than me. But as soon as the fire gets turned up, they fall away. Do you believe? And let me just tell you guys, again, I'm not here to condemn anybody, but what, I, what the Holy Spirit wants to do is convict you guys. It's to show you guys, like, man, in me, you'll have peace. In me, Jesus says, you will have peace. But even the disciples, even the disciples, while Jesus literally told them, man, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to die, he told them, and when he was crucified, they still, they, I, like in Saturday, a lot of people think it was quiet. I don't think it was quiet. I think there was chaos. I think there was, oh my goodness, all hope is gone. I'm going to go into it talking about Peter and Thomas. I would have been that Peter when Jesus would have told me, Carmela, I'm going, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm going to heaven. I would have been like, Jesus, do not leave me. Don't leave me, Jesus. What did he do? He rebuked, he rebuked him. He said, get behind me, Satan. Even Thomas said, unless I see you, I will not believe. I would have been that Thomas. Doubting. How many of us in here are doubting? How many of us are not truly believing? Look at your guys' life. Jesus is the prince of peace. He's a person, my brothers. He doesn't give us worry. It's not doubt. I, I sense that heavily right now because that's where I was. I'm telling you, I was crippled. And you know what I did to try to cover up all that fear for me because I couldn't deal with the fear? It was alcohol, drugs. I don't want to feel this fear. I can't deal with it. What are we covering ourselves up with? What are we trying to cover ourselves up with? Everything else pacifies. Jesus is the only one who satisfies. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. So let me just tell you, even the disciples doubted. 
Look what it says in Mark 16, 9 through 13. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. These are the disciples. Mary Magdalene said, I've seen Jesus. They were mourning and weeping. Were they standing in faith? Were they believing? Mourning and weeping, Jesus literally told them, bro, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die. That's what I'm talking about. Don't think we're alone. I'm not like, don't think we're alone. Faith is a process. Faith is a process. Don't, short, don't shortcut the process. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. But he wants to get you through it. He wants to walk you through it. They were mourning and weeping. Verse 11, when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, here it is, they did not believe it. Verse 12, afterward, Jesus <clears throat> appeared in a different form. Two of them, while they were walking in the country, these returned and reported to the rest of the disciples, but they did not believe them either. Jesus, same thing, went and told two different disciples, had an account, hey, we've seen Jesus. Abby, Alex, we've seen Jesus. We, I'm telling you, he's alive. Them too didn't believe. That's why we're preaching the way we preach. I'm telling you, I've seen Jesus. I've seen him work. Have you seen him work? I'm telling you, he's alive. He's risen. It's finished. Death couldn't hold him. That's what it's about. Do you have that revelation? Another familiar passage like I was talking about in John 20, 24 through 30, it talks about Jesus appearing to Thomas. Verse 24, John 20. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Now all the disciples, all of them, they seen Jesus. They went and told Thomas. And he, what did Thomas do? But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. That's what I'm saying. I would have been that Thomas. I would have been that Thomas. I think we kind of condemned Thomas and Peter. That would have been me. I know it would have been me. But let me tell you what happened, what changes everything in this passage. A week later, his disciples were in the house and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thomas literally said, unless I see him, I will not believe. Here comes Jesus, the risen Savior. And now can you imagine Thomas scared out of his, you know what? Like, oh my gosh, right? What's the very first thing he does? He walked through the doors in your guys' life. It doesn't matter what any door is locked or any barricade that you think that's in your life. The Lord could walk right through in an instant. Then verse 27, he said, peace be with you. Again, when we're all afraid, when we're standing in that fear, that's why I speak to you guys. Peace be with you. Then he, this is Jesus. then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting. Church, stop doubting. And believe. Verse 28, here it is. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. There it is right there. What happened? He had revelation. He had revelation. That's what this is all about. If you haven't had revelation, if you haven't seen him with your own eyes, there's no way any one of you guys in here could tell me that Jesus isn't real. What he's done in my life. I know where I should be. I should be doing life in prison right now without the possibility of parole. But Jesus. There's no way I should be a youth pastor. But Jesus. There's no way I should be a father, a father to my children. But Jesus. There's no way I should be able to be a husband to my wife. But Jesus. Him and why? Because I've had a revelation. And let me tell every single one of you guys. Here it is. Before I could become a husband. Before I could become a father. I'm speaking to you guys personally. 
before any of you guys become a provider, a father, a mother, whatever it is, become a son. Become a daughter. That's what it's about. I, could, I didn't know how to become a husband. I didn't know how to do it. But the Lord says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and then all things will be added unto you. I don't know how to be a, a pastor. I don't know how to be a leader. I don't know how to be a provider. But I could do all things through you, Christ, who give me strength. For to me, Philippians 121, the Apostle Paul, for to me, for to me, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Are you guys literally going to try to threaten me with heaven right now? <laughs> I've had revelation. I'm telling you, I'm, I guarantee you I was more fearful than all of you guys. What I believe, I was more fearful than probably everyone in here combined of what, what would happen if I would die. I'm telling you, but I'm telling you, I've had revelation. I've had it. That's what I'm saying for to me. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. That's what it is. That's why I'm here to preach the gospel to all creation. I'm not here, we're not here to present the bad news. You look on news, all they're doing is showing you fear, worry, doubt, condemnation, fear, fear, fear. Bad news, bad news. Jesus proclaimed, go into all creation and preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in his name. Not in Carmel's name, not in Justin. In his name. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you, let me end it in uh, verse 29. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now let's go back into the text of Mark, <clears throat> where I will tie this all in. In Mark 16, 9 through 14. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first, first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went <clears throat> and told who, those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported to the rest, but they did not believe it. This is Jesus comes to the scene now. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. I'm wondering how many of us in here, like I said, would Jesus will come in here and rebuke because of their lack of faith. Not to condemn. Why don't you believe? That's what this whole gospel is about. Do you believe? Do you believe? So how many of you guys believe after he just got done rebuking his disciples, he, he rebuked them, right, for their lack of faith. I, I think that the next statement out of Jesus' mouth are pretty serious. Think we should listen? All right. So here we go. In Mark 16, 15 through 18, it says, He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized... <clears throat> will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place hands on the sick people and they will get well you know what he was doing he was giving them the great commission he was giving them the great commission what is the great commission in matthew 28 18 then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, because of that, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey. Obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
So this is the first statement of you saying, I am a disciple. I am a disciple and I am a follower of Christ. That's your public declaration of your inward decision. In your guys' heart, I'm publicly saying, man, that old man, that old Carmelo, that old person I was is dead and gone. This is me being a disciple, not just a believer. I want to be a follower of Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ, right? Jesus said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. Follow him and he will make you. He will make you, right? Whatever you, you think you have, what you need to do, follow him and he will make you an amazing husband. Follow him, he will make you an amazing provider. Follow him and he will make you whatever you need to be. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 4. <clears throat> so again, regarding baptism. So first you got to believe, right? And then you got to be baptized. That's what we're talking about. And look what it says in Acts chapter 2. This is Peter preaching after the risen king Jesus, right? And this is what he says in Acts chapter 2. I'm going to give you the context. He was telling them, you guys put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. But God raised him from the dead. Like they literally, re they had revelation. Oh my gosh. We just crucified the living God, the son of God. Oh my gosh, what must we do? What must we do? In verse 37, he says, when the people heard this, they were cut to their heart. And said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38, this is what Peter says. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Baptism for the forgiveness of your sins. That's why I don't do young children, young kids, unless they had revelation. Do you know why you're getting baptized? For the forgiveness of your sins? That's what it's about. That the old person is dead and gone? I'm a new creation? Do you know that? Have you had revelation? Because if not, if you just come in here and get dipped, you know what it all is? It's all religion. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. <clears throat> Romans 6, 1 through 4. I'm getting ready to close because we're going to raise the dead right now. <laughs> Romans 6, 1 through 4. We're dead to sin and we're alive to Christ. This is Apostle Paul saying, what shall we say then? Question mark. Shall we go on sinning? By, <clears throat> so we, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. Exclamation point. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or, here it is. Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. That's what baptism is all about. It's the death, come on somebody, burial and resurrection signifying this old man who's up here signifies Jesus on the cross for every single one of us. Every sin that we've ever committed is our death, him on the cross. That's why we don't celebrate Jesus on the cross like this. We celebrate an empty cross, right? Why? Because he's risen. So this is, when you guys are in this water, when I'm talking about we're raising the dead today, right? This is, this is, you're signifying your death. You go down under this water. That's why we're not sprinkling. That's why we're not just, and some of you guys, you know how Jesus was in the tomb for three days? You guys know that, right? Three days. Three days. I'm going to give some of you guys in here because I've seen the list that Amanda gave me. I'm going to hold you guys under for three minutes. <laughs> All right? Because it's going to be death. Come on, somebody. Burial. Burial. That old person. I know you, sister. Come on. I know you, brother. That got to die. Die. No, no, no. Death. Burial. And resurrection. That's what baptism means. It's not just a religious act. But if you're in here today and you're being like, man, I was baptized as a young person. I didn't even know what that was. 
I just went through the motions. But if you're in here today, he said, whoever, Jesus said in his word, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But you got to believe that what, Jesus? That you took all of my sins of what I deserve. And he wants to raise you. And it says in 2nd, I'm going to end with this. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, come on somebody, if anyone, who? Anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. come You're a new creation. That's why we're publicly declaring in front of everybody here today. Man, that old man, that old man he throws into a sea of forgetfulness. You're buried with Christ. It's death, burial, and resurrection. So when you see me and Pastor Justin baptizing people, and you see me celebrating and us celebrating like this, because I know what that meaning is. I know why I'm baptizing this person in here. Because that old person is dead and gone. Do you know why you're getting baptized? Everybody stand up, please. We're going to end. And you guys getting baptized that are already baptized, uh, signed up the list, can you guys go to my right, your guys' is left, on this right-hand side and this uh, form a line? Because we're going to get ready to raise the dead right now. <clears throat> Father God, I just thank you, Father God. With every uh, head bowed and every eye closed. If any of you guys are in here and you're thinking like, maybe, man, I just came to watch somebody get baptized. That's the only reason why I came today. Let me tell you guys, it's not by accident. It's not by accident that any one of you guys are here today. Jesus wants you to encounter him today. And if you're saying right now, I've never received Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I want to do that right now. I'm tired of living in fear. I'm tired of living in shame. I'm tired of living in condemnation. I want that peace in me that surpasses all understanding. Or... You're someone else in here that you've had an encounter in the past with Jesus. But you allowed the storms and the worries and the cares of the world to just weigh you down. And you're not, a, like you don't have that fire no more. Like it's gone. Let me just tell you here, right now, I'm here to fan your guys' flame. I'm here to fan every single one of you guys' flames. And all you got to do is say, I repent. I want to turn from my old ways. I want to come back to you. If that's you in here today, and you're saying, Jesus, I just want you to come and fill my heart. I want you to come and be my Lord and my Savior. I want the personal revelation of who you are on the finished work of the cross. If that's you in here today, and you're saying, the way I walked in here, I'm not walking out the same. If that's you in here, and you're saying, Jesus, I need to feel your touch. I need to see you work in my life. I need you, Jesus. I have not been walking by faith. But I want to I put my whole life into your hands right now. I want to say, Jesus, I trust you. If that's you in here today, I want you to raise your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Oh, praise God. guys just repeat after me extend your guys' hands like this open to receive Heavenly Father I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me for all of my sins of what I deserve but right now Jesus I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me to be your hands and feet to my family, to my friends, and to the world. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 And let me, come on, come on. And let me tell some of you guys right now, even if you guys didn't sign the paper, and you guys are in here and saying, man, I probably did it when I was a kid or whatever the case. But now that I heard biblical scripture of the reason why of what baptism is about. And you're saying that the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart that you want to get baptized. We will stay here because there's some water right there. What's stopping you from being baptized today?
All right, we want to open that up for you guys. So, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, what you did here today, Father. We just thank you, Father God. It wasn't by accident, Father God, that they were here today for such a time as this, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, may you go with them, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. May we celebrate the life, Father God, that every single one of us is publicly declaring that their old self is dead and gone, and they're going to come up in a new life, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over everyone here, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. And right now, Father God, I speak peace, Father God. Peace that surpasses all understanding, Father God. Peace, Father. Peace. Again, peace is not a place, and it's you, Jesus. We just love and we praise you in Jesus' name. Ever said? Amen. 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 Let's do this.
Just one more time, sing this out. So I throw my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Can we give a shout of praise? Anybody else getting wet? Are we good? Amen. Let's pray. God, we just bless you. We thank you so much for all that you are. God, we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. God, that you are real, Jesus. God, that you're good. So again, today, Jesus, God, we ask, God, fill us with your spirit. God, as we leave this place, God, let us be used as your hands and feet. God, to glorify your name alone. God, we just say thank you, God. Thank you for this family called The Bridge. God, thank you for the life that's happening here, for the life change. God, for what you're doing, God, thank you that we get to be a part of it. So we just say we love you today. We praise you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Good. Love you guys. Have a good day. Woo.